So I want to thank everybody for all the support that you've shown to this channel. As I always say, I'm not here on my own merit. I am sharing what I hear from the Lord and the wisdom I receive from the Holy Spirit. Time is short, but we are called to share the gospel and to return to the word of God, to the truth of the gospel, which calls us to repentance, to holiness, and to bear fruit, which is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. There are a lot of discussions happening as per the timing of the rapture and the setting of a specific date or year or whatnot. And I would discourage everyone for putting too much attention on the exact timing of the rapture. This is not something that we are meant to know. However, the wisdom that we receive will point to the action and behavior we're supposed to lead ourselves and others as we are waiting for the Lord to return. This does not mean that we're not paying attention to what's happening in the world. And certainly we are to pay attention to the wisdom that we receive from the Holy Spirit, who in fact can show us specific times for specific purposes. So what I always say is that we do not know anything. It is not our wisdom. If we think that with our own minds, we can come up with the understanding of the mysteries of God. We're fooling ourselves. Instead, being humble and seeking the Lord as we are commanded in Hebrews 11.6, then we will receive wisdom, which with time and obviously the work of the Holy Spirit, will be able to share with others to give an understanding of the times that we're in. This is why I want to share this important message which is part of the wisdom that I have received as per the possible sequence of events leading up to the rapture. Now, I want everybody to take notes, if you can, pause the video, and ask your questions even in the commentaries. As I remind you that we are holding a Zoom, a series of Zoom classes, sessions, and services on weekends to which I invite you to participate where we go deeper into some of these teachings. In fact, we have started to broadcast live some of these sessions and I appreciate everybody supporting the channel as we go to the process of implementing better looking, more expensive, more detailed Zoom calls, but at least for the time being, they're being shared with everybody. So this teaching has to do with David and how David points in the direction of the rapture and the tribulation. So we're going to go to 1 Samuel 17. And we'll start on verse 37. And it says, 1 Samuel 17, verse 37, David said, moreover, the Lord had del that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. So if you follow this series on Daniel and then Samson and the leopard, now you understand that in Daniel 7 verses 3 to 7, we're introduced to four beasts. So let me read to you. Daniel 7 verse 3 says, And four great beasts came up from the sea that verse one from the other. Now we also know these are the same beasts that appear in Revelation chapter 12, but eventually chapter 13. Now, verse 4, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings were thereof plugged, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, as a man's heart was given to it. Now, verse 5, we're introduced to the second beast, and behold, another beast, a second like to a bear. And he raised up itself on one side, and he had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it, and they say thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. So the first thing that we notice is there is a lion as a first beast and a bear as the second beast. And we just notice in the, in the David story that the first two beasts that David slains are a lion and a bear in that exact same order, matching the order of the first two beasts coming out of the sea in Daniel 7 and Revelation 13. Now in Daniel 7, verse 6, we say, we read, After this I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, 
which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Now we know who this leper points to. If you've seen in that series, he points to Arari. And this is because it's Daniel 7, 6. And in that video, I explain how it matched the vision I received and eventually led to see that Arari was born on 1976. So when we go back to 1 Samuel 17, we now know that David is ready to fight the next beast, which is Goliath. So in 1 Samuel 17, verse 40, it says, And he, that's David, took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones, but off, out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. So then in verse 49, 1 Samuel 17, verse 49, it says, And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it, as smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his fate and to the earth. So according to the wisdom that I had received last year, the Lord had explained to me that the flying stone of David represented the rapture. That's because we know this from 1 Peter. So in 1 Peter 2 verse 5, it says, You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So the stone that is flying across the air represents the believers being raptured and in the process of being raptured, the beast falls on the floor. That's Goliath. This third beast represented by Goliath, which we now know is associated with the third beast, which is the leopard or Arari. This also has to do with what the Lord showed me, that as Goliath falls, there's association with Samson falling under the falling of the temple, which then takes us to the Matthew 24 account. In Matthew 24, verse 2, the Lord says, And Jesus said unto them, See you not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall be not left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, the verb thrown down is actually kataluo, and kataluo means to unharness. And so there, what the Lord is saying is these stones are going to be unharnessed. What, unharnessed from what? From the mortar, from what keeps it together, one from another. We know that this is a reference to the spiritual temple of the Holy Spirit, which is the believers. And so it's a reference to the rapture of these stones being unharnessed or taken out, left. Just like the stone that flies out of the sling of David is flying through the air. Uh, destroys the third beast or Goliath and establishes a kingdom. Now, in the same way in which the sling is made out of leather, the leather stays in the hands of David, so is the flesh of the believers, quote-unquote, left behind, where the spiritual stone is flying through the air. Now, this is further confirmed by the fact that in 1 Samuel 17, verse 40, as we read before, it says, And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones. Now, these five smooth stones, meaning they're clean, they're perfect, they are ready to go. It's a clear reference to the Matthew 25, verse 2, five wise virgins, where he says, Matthew 25, verse 2, and five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. So the idea that we're showing shown here is that at this time of the flying stone of David hitting Goliath or the third beast, eventually, uh, David has to be confronted with the fourth beast or the Antichrist. This fourth beast of the Antichrist is Saul. Saul, which turns to be into an evil king, is very much associated with the idea of the Assyrian. The Assyrian being a representation of the Antichrist. So in Isaiah 10 verse 5, we read, O Assyrian, the rod of my anger and the stuff in the hand is my indignation, says the Lord. Verse 6, I will send him against an hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. Will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets? 
Here's an important verse 7 says, Isaiah 10, verse 7. How by ye mean it not so, neither does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. Now, the whole account in Isaiah 10 goes from verse 5 to verse 14. I read, in fact, in verse 14, it says, And my hand at, had uh, found as a nest the riches of the people, and as one gather eggs that are left, if I gather all of the earth, and there was none that moved a wing or opened the mouth or peeped. Previously, previously in verse 13, it says, For he said, By strength of my hand I have done it, that's the Assyrian, and by wisdom, for I am prudent, for I have removed the bounds of the people and have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. Noted that this is the same exact language they use in 1 Samuel 16, verse 18, when it's talking about David. It says, Then answer one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. So now we notice that we have this relationship between David, the stone flying, representing the rapture, the third beast, which we've seen is associated with Arari in Daniel 7, 6, and any of the other videos that I've done on this, and then this Assyrian. Now there's a particularity because the Lord showed me very much at the beginning of my walk with them, I'm going to say in 2022, in the fall, an image of Mark Zuckerberg with an Assyrian king. Now, this image is something I had not understood. I did not understand for a very long time. And in fact, I left it kind of in the background. But the Lord brought it back. And as he showed me Isaiah 10, verse 5 to 14, when I went and looked up the date of birth of Mark Zuckerberg, this is what I found. So not only Mark Zuckerberg is born on 514, just like Isaiah 10 verses 5 to 14, describing the Assyrian, which is incredible because that's the vision the Lord gave me. But notice that it is the same exact date of birth as Israel, and the final date of the year is the same exact, except is mirrored. This is absolutely mind-blowing. This is not something I can come up with. It's not my wisdom. This man is not in the scope or radar of who we should be paying attention to as far as the end times. But so is Arari, and to a certain extent, Obama as well. These are the three men that have been shown to us as the key players of what will be the tribulation. And they will be playing a role that which, of course, we don't know for sure. But what we're seeing here, there is a sequence where the lion and the bear will surface first. And we think that this is likely to do with World War III, perhaps the demise of America, perhaps the rising of Russia. We don't know for sure. We're not wishing any terror or anything uh, tragic to happen to any country. We're just simply looking at what wisdom is coming out of this equation, which means that we will likely see, as we are told in Matthew 24 by the Lord, that these beginning of sorrows, which seem to have in fact started at the onset of 2023 with the protest that were uh, given to us in prophecy in the visions on October 2nd of 2022, of which I published by order of the Lord, the visions on October 20th of 2022, the protest in Israel, which turned out to be the greatest protest of history. We're talking about over half a million people coming to the streets of Israel, protesting, never seen in history. That's not something I could have understood in any way or imagined. And after that, we understand that those protests were started officially on January 7th. This January 7th is exactly nine months to October 7th of 2023 when the war in Israel started. That's nine months. And nine months means labor and sorrow that is a pregnancy and this is what the Lord is talking about in Matthew 24 when he talks about the beginning of pain and sorrow. With all this said, there's still a lot of things that we don't know. 
Does the mark of the beast has to do with Mark Zuckerberg? We don't know who exactly the Antichrist is, but could Obama be fulfilling their role? As a matter of fact, when we think of somebody who could take on a world leadership as a wolf in sheep's clothing, perhaps that's not the wrong candidate. And Arari is definitely not in a position of power of any sort right now, but we're definitely going to be paying attention if anything changes in that direction. And in the meantime, the focus is on Israel. Because the 10 years of labor and sorrow, which we know come from the book of Revelation, are pointing to Israel. The 10 years of labor and sorrow have been explained in other videos. But to give you a short recap here, when we go to Psalm 90, verse 10, we learn that the days of our years are 70 to 80, and that's a 10-year span. And those are labor and sorrow. But also Revelation 2, verse 10, it says, For fear none of these things, the Lord is saying, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you in prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. This is the church's Mernam, which call themselves Jews, but they're the synagogue of Satan, or some of them at least are. And the Lord is making reference to these ten days. What we know is not ten literal days, but most likely these 10 years of labor and sorrow, which started at the beginning of 2023, as far as we can tell. We're not here to give any certificates. We're not able to put dates to anything. We're just called to follow the Lord, to return to the word of God and pay attention to the signs the Lord is giving us. So the time is now to return to the Lord. We are taught in Exodus 12, and there is a teaching on this channel about that that the leavened bread is to be taken out of our houses. And that is the doctrine of man and the Pharisees, the hypocrisy and sin, because that is the leaven of Herod. Now, instead, we're supposed to eat leavened bread, unleavened bread, seven days a week. This is the word of God. We're supposed to eat the bread of life every single day and worship him, the Lord, seven days a week because we enter into his rest. And because we enter into his rest, now we are in the Sabbath rest, which means we're worshiping, seeking the Lord diligently every single day. This is what we're called to do as we share the gospel in love, in support of others, our brothers and sisters. Now, I thank you for listening to this message. I hope it was encouraging. I will continue to post and we will continue to do the live teachings. I ask you to please support those as well and share with others who need as we improve the graphics, the quality of the presentations and all these things that make it even more interesting. But it is the message that should be encouraging and the wisdom of the Lord. So we're less about the fancy presentations and more about the truth of the gospel. I ask you to return to the word of God. Seek the Lord with all your heart. Be blessed in Jesus name.